Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Casas. I'm a violinist and conductor from Regina, Canada, and we are here today to talk about what to wear or not to wear on the conducting podium. Now, believe it or not, uh, there is great debate on what is appropriate to wear on the podium. Uh, if you are a, an experienced conductor, this is something that is probably very natural for you, uh, but beginner conductors tend to miss this part of the information until it's a problem. So today we're going to come up with a, a checklist that is inclusive and that you can adapt to any ensemble that you're working with. First of all, let's talk about uh, color. So if you follow my expert videos or if you follow my Facebook page, you've probably noticed uh, a very consistent color palette on my clothing choices. If you're a teacher, within your teaching practice, you might end up uh, conducting a small music ensemble or sometimes adventure to conduct. Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Casas. I'm a violinist and conductor from Regina. Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Casas. I'm a violinist and... Hello everyone. Now, does that mean that you have to wear black clothes all the time? Uh, probably not. But uh, whatever you're wearing, remember that uh, the point is for the musicians to follow the tip of the baton. So whatever you're wearing, make sure that um, the baton doesn't blend with the color of your shirt, like this. Now let's talk about size. So you might want to avoid anything uh, too low cut or too revealing. And the only reason for this advice is uh, functionality rather than modesty. So if you're conducting and you're worried too much about uh, you know your clothes getting out of place, or if you're you know you're uh, you're worried about your skirt your skirt getting too high, or you know you're you're just worried about your clothing in in, in general. Uh, this will distract you from uh, the rehearsal and get on the way of the dialogue between you and the musicians and the audience. Um, in the same spirit of functionality, you might want to avoid anything too tight. Uh, remember that you want to not restrict your range of motion, that you want to ha be able to extend your arms or uh, be able to lean forward uh, without worrying about uh, your, your clothes getting out of place. And last but not least, uh, let's, work, let's talk about accessories. So uh, avoid any large piece of jewelry or any shiny piece of jewelry. Uh, at some point you will probably be working with, uh, with the stage lighting, so uh, very bright reflectors, very shiny lights, and the last thing you want to do is to blind one of your musicians with the reflection of a big piece of jewelry. Um, along those lines, uh, get rid of your watch. Uh, it does make noises and it's kind of distracting and it gets on the way and it, it tends to be a little bit heavy when you're conducting so just take it off and get rid of it of, of it all together now all being said that doesn't mean that you have to wear formal black clothing all the time uh, make sure that your clothing choices reflect your identity and the identity of the group that you're working with uh, you might have to be uh, mindful of the type of job that you've been hired to do. And uh, during rehearsals, the, the clothing etiquette might be uh, a little bit more relaxed. Uh, usually I just wear uh, whatever I would wear to the office, just, uh, just um, a dress shirt and pants or semi-casual, semi-formal uh, type of clothing, but that's just me. Uh, for you, make sure that it reflects your identity, uh, the identity of the group, and feel free to be you. Uh, if the only way to connect with your group is, is creativity, then feel free to be creative. Uh, what, however, when in doubt, think of always functionality, clarity, and collaboration. Thank you very much for watching and stay safe. If you're interested in this topic or any other topics about conducting, uh, keep an eye on my page about conducting lessons.